Welcome to the Tapestry of Life on CCP-TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I am Dr. Pascal Scholes, Professor of Behavioral Health and Human Services at Community College of Philadelphia. Today's topic, recovery and family intimacy. Addiction is often a family challenge. Today we are discussing the effects of two individuals' struggle to build a bridge to a family of care, mutual concern, and resilience. I want to welcome back my co-host, Rick Ford from the Department of Behavioral Health, and my two special guests, Gloria and Robert uh, from uh, the, well, I know Robert, you're working as the Department uh, also of Behavioral Health right now, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So maybe we can get started by talking a little bit about uh, the topic and uh, how you two met, maybe. Although I know I met you earlier because yes. uh, we had evaluated your uh, resume and did some other things with you at the college, and, and you moved on eventually, I know, and got a bachelor's degree, so. Yes. So you're doing uh, Well, I'm well. working on the bachelor's. Okay. I'm, I'm almost good. there. Good. But, uh, That's important in relation to resilience and transformation. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, yeah. If my wife doesn't mind, I, I'll okay. tell a little bit, and then she can sure. parlay the rest. I think uh, it was 2000. In five, when we actually met, um, we were both in a program. Uh, when you say in a program for the audience, yes, that means in some recovery. We were in what was known back then as a partial program. Partial hospital. Hos program. Partial hospital, yeah, mental health. Um, and it was funny because we were both in the same caseload, um, so we were both in the same group room pretty much all day together but not knowing each other. And at several different points, I would hear my wife's story and I'm sure she heard my story. You know, and at least for me, I'm gonna only speak for me. Uh, listening to my wife's story and hearing the things that she's been through, you know, um, and I can let her speak to what she's been through, sure. but um, I personally just felt a need right off the bat to want to help to heal her, but at the same time, heal my own self. You know, um, back then in 2005, 2006, you know, most programs weren't designed to help people like us not only heal, but to have a relationship, right. to be intimate with each other because we were quote unquote looked at as people who shouldn't have. And we were told a lot of times back then that you can't do this and you're not gonna be this. And you know, I've heard that many times in my own family. Sure. So I didn't need to hear it in a program, but it was happening back then. So, and, and they used to refer to that a lot as stigma and yes. the whole uh, body of knowledge now around how negative stigma is in relation to the challenges that you face. And yes. I assume that's partly what yeah, there was a lot of stigma around people with mental health challenges, who live with mental health challenges, who live with substance use challenges, who live with really any kind of challenges because the stigma was that you can't be successful. You, you have to stay under our umbrella. We're going to warehouse you. You stay in this corner. Sure. You're to be seen but not heard. Yeah. And, um, and God forbid you... You said and he got intimate with another person who has a challenge and got together. Yes, yeah. Dr. Scholes, that, that, that was a whole nother uh, entity that me personally, as you can see, I love to talk. So I was never scared to actually advocate and talk for what I wanted. And this young lady captured my heart even back then only because I saw and heard the things she was dealing with. But here's the kicker, she was dealing with it. She was expressing, she was talking. So I knew she was a young lady that wanted something out of life, had some goals. And I personally felt that together we could be a force that couldn't be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, that, that, that's part of my story. I'd like to let her tell sure. her side too, because I think it's important to have both sides of what the intimacy part was and also maybe what the attraction was and maybe some of the other things. And maybe that a little we history we can get back to. Yes. yes. But sure, Gloria, go ahead. 
Well, um, for me, my um, the, the path that led to me being in this program with Robert is just as important as the relationship. Prior to uh, becoming a, a, a part of the partial program, I was homeless. And um, I think shoplifting, I can't really remember because all that is so fuzzy. I think I, I was shoplifting and got arrested, yeah. which led to me being hospitalized because my behaviors were abnormal. And um, I was put into a hospital in a, a, a psychiatric ward. Uh, I stayed there for about two weeks. And uh, one of the uh, psychiatrists that I met with while, while I was there saw something in me, actually listened to me. Yeah. For the first time in my life, someone was hearing me and, 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 and feeling my passion and my pain and everything and suggested that I go to a day program. I um, went to that day program, but my first day there, I walked out because I saw all kinds of people mm -hmm. and I said, I do not belong here. These people are crazy. I'm not crazy. I just need a little help. Uh, I was diagnosed uh, with uh, bipolar disorder and schizoaffective disorder. Mm -hmm. I had a, that double diagnosis on me. <laughs> I was put on all kinds of medications that really altered my behavior. I had anxiety attacks. I was, just, I was just scared of people in general, afraid of large crowds of people. So the whole group thing at the program threw me off. And then one morning, under my therapist's suggestion, I went to a group that Robert was speaking in. And I actually sat there. I had to will myself to sit there. But when he stood up and began to speak, I was like enwrapped in everything that he said. He was so honest and open in his sharing. And it didn't, it didn't click for me that first time, but after my therapist suggested that I trail him, and after trailing him to the different groups, and hearing him speak, and hearing how he wasn't ashamed, I was taught to be ashamed of mental illness. That was taboo. If you had a mental illness, you did not tell anybody because you didn't want to bring shame on your family. Yeah. And I had experienced the stigma. I am a... Uh, um, religious person. I've been in church all of my life. And they would put me before the pulpit. They would throw oils on me. Oh. And they would pray the devil out of me. Oh. I was cursed. I was taught that I was cursed. I was a devil's child. And there was no hope for me. And uh, I learned to be ashamed of that diagnosis and keep it to myself. But upon hearing Robert speak that day, and several more times after that, it made me want to open up and begin to talk, but I couldn't do it without him being there. Mm -hmm. So he was I like a kind of a catalyst. For you. Yes, yeah. yes, he was my support in a you know mm -hmm. some kind of way because I, I gained strength from his story. And that first time I stood up and talked, I don't know where the words came from, but I revealed everything, uh -huh. and that was the beginning of my recovery. And it's all thanks to Robert. <laughs> Well, well, you know, let me chime in here because I want to kind of just take a little step back. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go with Robert. Was that your first time in a partial program? Um, actually, no. I like to say I'm one of the people who, and I hate to say it, but I have to be honest, I abused the system. Yeah, and because and, 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 I want to get to, mm -hmm. and the reason why I asked that question Yes. Normally when a person gets sick or tired of being who they are and what ignited that spark in you too was his level of honesty. And yeah. I think you had gotten beaten to a point. Yeah. Well, while this time while I'm in the program, I'm going to utilize all the tools. I'm going to be as brutally honest because I'm tired of living like the way I'm living. Well, Am I I'm, right? I'm, yes, yes. And I'm glad you brought that up because I had been in and out of psych units and programs, I want to mm -hmm. say 17 times, 17 close to times. For the record. For the record, yeah, <laughs> that I can count. There yes. were probably a few times I can't count because, like my wife said, I was very fuzzy yes. those gray periods. But one of the things, and I'm so glad that you asked me um, about what it was, it this wasn't time. just this time. This time. It wasn't just that I was sick and tired. What happened was I found out I was positive. Okay. So when I found that out, I was Explain literally. What do you mean by that? Because I don't know. I, we know what positive means. I was HIV positive, yeah. and um, I literally 
was at a do or die point in my life. Yeah. You know, uh, my higher power, and I just choose to say higher power because I don't want to offend anybody, um, really spoke to me and was literally saying, I've showed you institutions because I've been in them several times. Mm -hmm. I've showed you jail, prisons mm -hmm. I've been to several times. The last choice is death. Mm -hmm. So at that point, for me personally, he put death at my door. Yeah. So there was only one choice left, either go to the prime box or live. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sure at that point in my life, I chose to become the best advocate, the best human being right. that I could become because I wanted to show the world, and hopefully this will be my legacy because I don't see myself ever getting rich, but one of the <laughs> you things, rich. You're rich. yes, yeah. in my heart, That's right. That's um, right. one of the things that I'm hoping to be able to do to leave as a legacy for my children, for my family, for the people in the world is don't ever be ashamed of who you are, what you have, what you're going through, mm -hmm. because the next person is going through things that are similar, that can benefit, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's where I go back to the intimacy piece because there's nothing that my wife has gone through that I'm ashamed of, that kept me from wanting to love her, you know, and for many, many years, when I first found out I was HIV now, positive. Now hold that no, because mm -hmm. I wanted to, I wanted go to kind of go somewhere, and I, before we get to your wife, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once you had that uh, jarring experience, a spiritual awakening, mm -hmm. things started getting better for you, or was it, you know? I have to be honest, it was an up and down hill. Okay. Um, personally and spiritually, I was still in that low period. Yeah. Because now that I found out that I was HIV positive, mm -hmm. no one will ever love me. So now, were you still using at the time? Was there any substance abuse? Yes, there were several slippage. You know, he I call them he relapses and slippage. His, his use pattern. He talked about his mental health challenge. Yeah, but yes, I, I'm just trying enough. to see once the diagnosis of okay, right. finding out that you're HIV positive, which can be uh, quite uh, a dooming at the mm -hmm. time. What triggered? The, you know, what happened from there? Well, it was a roller coaster ride. Yeah. Even though I didn't want to die. Mm -hmm. I stopped using for long, I say long periods, nine yeah. months, a year, yeah. you know, but then because I wasn't healed emotionally and spiritually, I would relapse. Because into now, what? what would you relapse into? Uh, uh, crack, cocaine. Oh, oh, oh. It wasn't uh, that you relapsed into a no, health concern. Not health concerns. Okay. Now, the whole time that I was living, I was going to the doctors. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I was taking my meds. Because mm -hmm. as I said, I did want to live. Were you on the cocktail? Or the one? Or no, the I take one pill. Eight, oh, okay. One pill. One pill. And, you know, thank God for the advancement. Yes. Yeah. Which is why I'm very proud and honored that you all have us uh, on this show so that I can let people know that we're no longer on cocktails. We're on one or two pills. Yeah. And it's we, no longer a death march. In the not 80s, at all. I would have said, yeah, death and dying was a I probably wouldn't consistent. be sitting here. That's right, probably right. right. Yeah. But yes. we had the, you know, the, the almost a chemotherapy <laughs> uh, approach, and it actually ha has worked. Yes. I mean, the And even back then in the 80s, uh, Doc, one of the things, it wasn't them being positive or having AIDS that killed them. It was generally the cocktail. Yeah. Because the pills were so toxic yeah. and there were so many, of them. Yeah. their bodies couldn't excrete um, all the medication that was being put inside of them. And that was the actual killer to the point now most people are on, I want to say max, maybe three pills. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm currently downtown with the Jonathan Lack Center. They're my best friend, Philadelphia Fight. Sure. Um, I advocate for everything we're doing in Philly. Um, we're so far ahead of the game. I'm so proud to be a part of Philly. Well, Go how, ahead. how has the, uh, the, infect, the HIV positive affected your relationship, the intimacy of your relationship, if you, if you feel comfortable in talking well, about that? Well, here's the thing. Because <laughs> even though it's under control, 
it's still communicable. Yes, in 2003, um, which is when I totally stopped using, um, I got my mind right, I started going back to church, and that is actually the little period that I learned that people weren't scared to touch me anymore. Mm -hmm. They weren't scared to yeah. love me. Yeah. Right. So or to the hug healing you and those to kinds of things which don't get communicated. So I really started healing and and that's when the intimacy piece came in because when I met Gloria, sky was the limit. It was all over then. I was fully healed because <laughs> she would hug me more than I wanted to be hugged. She well, still does it at home sometimes, you know. I'm like, baby, you're you, you smothering me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I guess we all need a glory. Right. Yeah. 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 And I'm grateful because she, she said to me, you know, I don't care what you're dealing with. We're going to deal with it together. We're going to live a full, healthy life. And she's actually helped give me the courage to be able to sit here today mm -hmm. to talk about what I'm going through. The intimacy piece, I have to be honest, you know, in any marriage, there's always work. Sure. Yeah. We put in a lot of work. We have our good days, our bad days, you know, psychologically. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I still feel like I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. I still feel like sometimes I have to be honest, put it out there. Uh, I'm scared to let her touch me. Okay. These are my own psychological things mm -hmm. that I go through because I'm like, if I give it to her, then I will want to kill myself. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, w in the beginning, we've taken precautions, protected sex. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I, I still go through periods psychologically, but I, we have seven years in now. Mm -hmm. So I, if I could say, my mama not going nowhere. I'm, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> we built some things, you know, we yeah, built a home. We've uh, built bridges between her family and my family. Now it's our family yeah. with our children, with uh, our grandkids. And it's funny because once they see this show, this will be the first time that my children and my grandchildren will know what's going on with dad oh, and what's great. going on. So this is a huge step for me right now, for sure. us, I should say, yes. as far as the intimacy piece, because We've kind of kept that at home. But like I said, I'm, I'm working on some things where I would like to leave a legacy where people will get educated out there to say, you know, Rob and Gloria left us with a powerful message. They left us with no matter what you're going through in life, you can have a relationship, work at it. You can get through anything. The yeah. sky's the limit. So you're sitting over here and you fall in love with this young man <laughs> yes. and, uh, and yes. because of his, uh, his wonderful ability to share. And yes. he, he does do that well. We're not <laughs> arguing that. So, uh, and, and, and you don't know that I guess he's HIV positive in the sense of uh, your relationship with him. Uh, how did that evolve? I mean, from, an, from your perspective of the intimacy, did it, was it fine? Did it turn you on? What happened? Uh, well, like I said earlier, um, that was one of the things that attracted me to Robert, his ability to share such a stigmatizing and intimate thing about himself. Okay. I was sitting in a group of our peers when he shared that he was HIV positive. Mm -hmm. So prior to a relationship, me falling in love with him, it was out in the open. Mm -hmm. And based on my nursing experience, I worked for 23 years as an LPN okay. in a major hospital mm -hmm. in the city. Mm -hmm. In, in the 80s, when the AIDS epidemic first exploded, I actually had come into contact with several patients. Okay, so you had a familiarity, but it wasn't strange to you. And no, it wasn't yeah. strange well, to that, me. Well, that was helpful, I guess. Yeah, I accept the fact that people need love. That's, yeah. that's one of our um, hierarchies of need, the need to be loved, to receive love, and be loved by others. Mm -hmm. And I am also <laughs> uh, a person with a close connection with my higher power, and that's a part, I feel like that's a part of my being, to show people love and to teach people that it's okay to love somebody in spite of their challenges. Yeah, so I, 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 mean, I, I don't want to interrupt you too much because, uh, you know, your story is a good story, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. But it, I think one of the reasons why it was probably so easier for you 
to love him when you found out some of his story mm -hmm. was that you had a lot of already experience with the issue and yeah. therefore didn't come to the game, so to speak, yeah. with a lot of uh, baggage about, yes. oh, I can't touch him, uh, yeah. I'm going to get infected, <laughs> and, which is actually yeah. what initially in the 80s even counselors were frightened of in some of the, yeah. Yeah. the programs. So you already had a, a foundation of good information, which yeah. we would hope a lot of other people would have. Right. And right. Some of that in the sharing in this show, they, they get the information, they realize that, you know, by uh, hugging Robert isn't going to <laughs> exactly. do anything but uh, hug Robert. Right. Exactly, you know I mean? and she has some good fellas. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> So you had a certain comfortableness with the topic. Yes, and um, as far as my nursing experience with the um, AIDS revolution, um, I also had my, ba I lost my baby brother. He died from okay. AIDS. Yes. And I was his caretaker. I was the only person in my family who would love him and support him and make sure that he ate and change his diapers when he became incontinent and uh, just be there for him, my whole family refused to because they they were afraid and I mean I understand that but being a human and knowing that we all need love mm -hmm. and support and encouragement it didn't I, happen. I, I just don't understand it I don't understand it when do you lose your human humanity and uh, turn people away because of, of their challenges but um I don't know that's just never been me I've been able to uh, love people unconditionally. I began my nursing career as a 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. I falsified documents so I could work in a nursing home. And the nurses back then would give me all the heart patients, the patients that needed their wounds or uh, dressings changed, the patients that needed uh, their diapers changed constantly because they knew I didn't have a problem with it, oh, and okay. I did it with love. So it's something that is a part of Gloria, mm -hmm. a part of who I am, the person that I am. And it, it has really, in, you know, enforced my beliefs. And now, you know, I just don't see uh, anything in, in this life as far as humans and now even animals because prior to meeting Robert, I had this fear of dogs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Today, I love, we have two pit bulls, mm -hmm. Precious and Max. They are my babies and I love them to death. And I assume those pit bulls have your humanity, right? Yes, they do. <laughs> and yes, love. they do. And love. And yes. love. I mean, they're not running around like you typically no, think of pit bulls in the yes, culture. No. Stereotypically, no. Think yeah, of them. yeah. I'm not saying that's the way and they the are. The main message that I want to get out today to people in general is that, um, in spite of challenges, in spite of what we see on mm -hmm. the exterior, we all need to learn to love and accept one another, and support each other, and encourage each other. It doesn't matter. A diagnosis of HIV AIDS now is just like a diagnosis of cancer. Okay. A, my diagnosis of heart disease. I've had a um, I've had triple bypass surgery. You know, and uh, for me to shun Robert because of his diagnosis and you know his challenges would be like me shunning myself. Mm -hmm. I still need love. I still need nurturing. I still need support, and I still need encouragement. And that's the piece that people need to understand. We don't take anything else from Gloria Martin in this particular discussion today. Learn to love one another and really support each other and go beyond all of the stigma and stereotypes that are out there today. Hmm. Wow. You know, I see where Robert gets his fire from. <laughs> or, 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 we we, we kind of ignite kinda, each you other. Know what? You know, it's really interesting. It's good when you wind up with people who like, on uh, ignite each other. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, know. you know, it makes a better flame. Be, he used to be a saying that two dead batteries can't start a car. That's right. <laughs> but that's you right. guys that's met that's in right. treatment, and yeah. yes. typically we talked about intimacy, and normally in a treatment environment that they say that's taboo. To yes. you know, mainly with people with challenges, you, you shouldn't be talking to her, and you, you know, you stay over there, and the men hang with the men, and the women hang with women. Yes. But honest sharing unlocks honest sharing. And I think today, people are attracted to brutal honest. Robert's yeah. always honest and open. Yeah. And I think, you know, listening to him, I can just imagine you sitting there. And, and before I go there, how many times have you been uh, in a partial program? 
that was my first experience. Wow, you were so fortunate free. because yes. you, uh, just imagine if she was in a another program prior to that, listening to people that aren't really ready to get better. Exactly. But here it is. You were so blessed to walk in a and uh, be in a program where you hear Mr. Martin at the time. Yes. What an attraction. Yes. Yeah, what an attraction. And I guess for the audience, they should understand that a partial program, is it the 10 hour one? Is that the partials that you were in? Partial was, yeah, they was were eight hours. Eight hours, eight, eight to eight 10 hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think people should appreciate it that there's the outpatient programs, there's the partial programs, yeah. mm -hmm. then there's the inpatient, <laughs> inpatient, inpatient programs. Inpatient yeah. programs. Yeah. So yeah. you're in between the two. You're kind of in need of more help than just. Mm -hmm outpatient which might be once or twice a week two or three hours yeah right. you're in the eight to ten hour model uh, which five means days a week five days a week mm -hmm. so which means to that, each other every day that there's a lot <laughs> of different best. issues yeah that are are covered yeah and, 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 and different topics that get discussed so now so now when did you guys meeting every day and Robert's sharing he's you're, you're sharing at every group I'm quite sure <laughs> you know what? <laughs> so uh, when did it happen? When did you say, uh, should we go to lunch? Can we go to movies? When did that 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 thing happen? You know what? It's funny that you mentioned that because I was the one that asked um, to take oh, me out. <laughs> well, of course. Yes. Um, it, it ha actually happened after I would say about a month. Really? Of me just going to the groups and you know feeling something, and I still can't describe what it was. It's a love. really strong attraction. Yeah. And uh, I had we were we were teasing, kidding around in the lunchroom. He he it was his uh, turn to cook, prepare the meal, and uh, he was standing there talking with our therapist. And I walked up to them. I don't remember what exactly was said, wow. but I walked away and I said, "How about you take me out to lunch?" How did you respond to that, Robert? At first, I told her, I'm cooking lunch right now, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I actually did wind up taking her to lunch, but my circumstances, I was really embarrassed at the time when she approached me because I didn't have myself together, meaning financially, my living arrangements. Okay. At the time, I was living at the Otley House, yeah. shelter for all men. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the one in West Philly, right? Yes, in West yes. Philly. I believe that's 69. Yeah, 69. Well, yeah, the well, yeah. Yeah. Human Services. Um, and I was very grateful for my beginnings, but my beginnings were very hard. So, so my question now is, mm -hmm. she asked you, and normally mm -hmm. it's usually reverse, but because of the attraction, you said, Robert, take me lunch. Now, you went through all those fears you just mentioned. Oh, I don't have financial, mm -hmm. I ain't living mm -hmm. together, I this, that, and the other. I got I, creative. We went I was going to gonna a, ask you that. We went to a hot dog truck. <laughs> I got her a sandwich <laughs> with the, the $5 I had. Right. I didn't even eat. You right. know, well, I, there you I, go. <laughs> I got you. And we actually went to, and I'm going to tell you, you're going to laugh at this. We went to, you know where the trolley comes up? From uh, underneath, now, right there across at 34th from the, Street. Yes. Yeah. When it came up, there's a couple of benches mm -hmm. that you can sit at at the trolley stop. Wow. We took the sandwich. We went over there. We sat because it was right across the street from the program. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I let her eat and enjoy and stuff. And then I stole a kiss. <laughs> you stole it. I, I stole a kiss. Go ahead, Robert. Go ahead. <laughs> She leaned in, you know, and they just they say that eighty ten. If you go in eighty, and she come back ten, 10 in. in. Yeah. Um, so we had our first kiss. You violated and the barrier, is that yeah. Yeah, the barrier, yeah. the barrier. And I think from there it was just she made me work. I have to be honest, and I I really love her for this. One of the things was. She made me court her for like a year. Oh, okay. Old fashioned courting, yes. Yeah. Didn't even know what the word was. Now, how did the people in the program yeah, that's a monitor important. you yeah. guys? Now, here it is. You, 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 you guys feel something. You kiss. Mm -hmm. I'll see you tomorrow in treatment. I guess. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Now, and, and also, put in perspective that historically, and we want to enforce we were this, told. reinforce yes. this idea, that it's real clear, they say, in the first two years of your recovery, that you are to be basically living alone, that you no should be having relationships no with people yeah. because you have to work on your relationship yeah. with yourself. Yes. And you hear all of those kinds of stories. Now, here you go. You go kind of 
against the green. So I'm, I'm wondering, when you went back, uh, did you hide it? Did you share it? Uh, what and what did, what happened? <laughs> Look at Glory. Glory is like, uh oh. <laughs> we didn't hide it. We yeah. did not hide it. Um, they had to understand where we were coming from. We respected all the rules. We did not go to any more groups together after that. Mm -hmm. That was taboo. We were not allowed to have groups together. But what we did on our personal time, when we yeah. took our lunch breaks and after the program, that's when we got together and met up and talked. He was living in the shelter. I was living in the basement of my daughter's home. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would invite him to come over. I told my daughters about, actually I had my daughter and I'm gonna share something with him, with you guys <laughs> today that I argued with him about and denied it. But I had my daughters and my grandchildren appraise him. I invited oh. him over to my daughters mm -hmm. for dinner. Oh, okay. To get their approval. Process. Yeah. Sure. Your to get their approval. Now did you Thank discuss, God, were you able to discuss your issues, uh, your intimacies, uh, uh, in group, even though you, it was clearly you're not supposed to be doing that? No, we couldn't do that there at the program. Good. And uh, in the beginning of our relationship, there was no like sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. We just did all the other things that couples do, hugging, kissing, holding hands. Supporting each other. This was that year you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a long year. A long year. <laughs> Rob Sam was a long <laughs> year. <laughs> yeah, I said that was mostly based on yeah. my religious affirmations. Okay. You know, we, we weren't married, mm -hmm. so there wasn't going to be any sexual contact until you marry me. Okay. As Beyonce, you like it? Put a ring on it. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, too, though. That first year, if I could, talking about intimacy, mm -hmm. it really let us know that if there was no sex, we would still make it as a relationship. Okay. A yeah. lot of people get together just for the physical reasons, yes. which is why most, and I'm not, you know, a therapist or a, a marriage counselor, but one of the things I have learned is Sex is a small portion of a relationship, mm -hmm. very small. It's what's in your heart and what's in your mind, you know, and what's in your soul for that person that will continue to keep the marriage going. Because after sex, then what do you have? And one of the things I think I've learned in that first year, because when I was younger, that listen, that's all it was for me. Yeah. You know, I yeah. was a woman chaser. I got green eyes. I had to, <laughs> back then I had the wavy hair, you know. Sure. <laughs> Which is I, I gotta be honest, how I became And your testosterone positive. was jumping all <laughs> yeah. over. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Um but I finally found out what intimacy really mm -hmm. was. And it was the meeting of two minds, the meeting of two souls, the meeting of wanting to build something together you know putting some goals on a board and saying okay how are we going to obtain this yeah. you know that's all a part of intimacy and i'm very grateful for that year because it let me know when i go psychologically into my closet yeah and i'm having that moment don't touch me or you know she'll know too mm -hmm. he's going through some things mm -hmm. might be a week yeah, a <laughs> couple weeks. Yeah, you know, but she's still standing. Yeah. You know, as you're talking, it reminded me of, 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 of and I, I'm going mm -hmm. back quite a few years when I read the book, and it was called The Dance of Intimacy. I don't know if you it's one of those kind of self help mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of books, and 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 that's basically some of the, what they talk to, and that is that intimacy is more uh, like a, 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 a finely oiled tuned dance, exactly. and and the better you dance together. Mm. And there's more to the dance than just the sexual dance. Yeah. yeah. And the, the dancing becomes mm -hmm. important. The, the whole piece, really. Yeah. yeah. But, but you know, now you hook up with Gloria. Yes. Were there any times where that desire, you know, most of the times when the goal you mentioned, most people look for the physical. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And were there any times in the development of the rela relationship you said, I don't know if I want to, you know, because we're so used to sabotaging mm, our relationships. Yes. When did you say, you know what, she's too nice for me? You know, you, you probably am going with that. Yes. yes. I still go through it to this day. Yeah. Um, but I, I think 
in the very beginning with me already feeling that I wasn't worthy of her or any woman. Yeah. One thing did strike me. I was married before. And one of the things that I didn't have was the knowledge that I have now. You know, a lot of times we say if we only knew back then, then what, what we, we know, know now, now. Mm -hmm. you know, we would have been all right. So, and I have to be honest, I thoroughly screwed up my first marriage. Okay. It was all on me. I, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, uh, I didn't mess it up, you know. No, that was me. Yeah, it takes a level of with honesty. The, right, with the substance use, um, the chasing the other women, mm -hmm. you know, not coming home at night, you know, I had a little gambling problem, you know, a little, little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, which gave me that vision to have that whole 360 degree mm -hmm. change in my mindset. Yeah. And I knew, and I, I spiritually, I'm there now. Yeah. I, when I talked with my higher power, it was like, if you give me somebody, yeah. I'll show you what I'll do with them. Yeah, this time. This time. Yeah. And I'm yeah. keeping yeah. my promise. Yeah. I, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. Let me say this. I'm human. Mm -hmm. You know, mentally, I go through some things. You know, even on the streets, I still have behaviors I'm working on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. When you talk about intimacy, that takes a lot of work within yourself. There's a lot of temptation. I'm a human being. Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, I have to be honest with who I am. I have faults. I know my wife has faults. And this is where I was telling you, Doc, where the work comes in. Yeah. It is yeah. work. You know, there's work. times I've come home and talk with, babe, I'm feeling this kind of way. This is what's going on. And she'll be like, okay, baby, it's okay for you to feel that way. You know, just don't act on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and sure. it, cause it, it's it a has feeling. to be it my best pass. friend, right, yeah. that I can talk to, or I will go act on it, because that has been my past. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I can't handle this. Let me go get one, right. or let me go gamble, or, you know, uh, let me go get that trick. Yeah. And then I'm stuck in a crack house again. And so. then it's the same thing all the, over the same again. Pattern. Mm -hmm. And, and I kind of see where you're going with equating mm -hmm. the commitment to your wife is almost like the reverse. If you act out, it's the same obsession, compulsion, and the inability that one is too many it's in a thousand, thousand never, never enough. enough. Never enough. Yeah. So, and yeah. I, I'm there. I identify 100% yeah. with you and, there. And you know, a, a lot of both of your conversations around intimacy are actually the fundamental basic building blocks of effective counselors. Yeah. Warmth, empathy, right, right. genuineness, the ability to share, the ability to not allow the shadow to have a negative impact on your life. And actually, if, if you practice those things, not only as a human being, as a person in a relationship, mm -hmm. it's also something that is the most effective way to work with people. People. You know, yeah. that, that you're exactly. transparent. Yeah. And that's a problem that a lot of people say, like you said, I think I forget when you said you went to a psychiatrist and they weren't that understanding or sensitive. And, and you say to your, not, not that I want to necessarily uh, go negative on psychiatry because well, uh, uh, <laughs> but we you know, some of my friends are wonderful psychiatrists, yeah. I'm not arguing that. Yeah. But you wonder sometime uh, where is the warmth and where is the empathy or what they refer to as bedside manners. Right. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. referred to as that. <laughs> and, you know, it seems like both of you come out of a model in which those are very, very critical and important and the concept of sharing becomes important, but they are the critical issues in intimacy. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Don't you think? Yeah. They, they, really, they really are. Yeah. Yeah. So you're fortunate to have found each other, even oh. if it was in the partial program, <laughs> uh, <laughs> as opposed to some other place, in a bar or on the street yeah. or yeah. Uh, uh, relatives knew each other or whatever it is. So we do meet people. Mm -hmm in odd places yes. and in unique places. Yeah. And what we make out of those places mm -hmm. can affect our lives forever, right. even if it came out of a place that is not real positive in yeah. the sense of, you know, yes. in, in a down yeah. mood or things happening to you. Yeah, I, so. just, I, I just think that it was quite interesting that her first time in a partial program, mm -hmm. <laughs> had it been, uh, quote unquote, some other jokers there, yeah. this, this would never have happened. And let me just say one thing. I, it was suggested to me. I've been in and out of uh, mental uh, institutions 
for like the last, prior to meeting Robert, yeah. for those five years before I met him, I was in and out. Because yeah. I lived on the streets right here in Center City, eating all the trash cans, in my own world, talking to myself. You didn't run into me? <laughs> I probably did. Look, we probably shared the subway stop together, <laughs> used yes. the restroom facilities. Yeah. But um, out of all of those times, when, it was, when I was released from the hospital, nobody touched me or really listened to me and heard what I was saying before. They talked at me. Yeah. And I would I would get out of the hospital, I'd be like, I ain't going there. And I just wouldn't show up. Yeah, but that we took that one doctor to actually sit there, look me in my face, lean forward. I saw the, the care and compassion. Wow. He actually mm -hmm. heard me. And the impact that that had on me was that I wanted to follow through. Because if somebody told me, he was the first person that ever told me that I was okay. And that I could get through this, yeah. but I needed some help. And mm -hmm. he told me about how the, the going to the day programs would help me. I would get the, uh, the therapy, I would get the medications. And he said, he, he actually heard me when I said that I was an LPN and that I worked for 23 years in the hospital. And those things, I mean, we are not good listeners all the time, but this doctor had the ability to listen to me and hear what I was saying, that I'm an intelligent person. I mean, I graduated high school. I got my LPN degree. I had to prove hardships in life. Yeah. You know, but that is not the um, definition of who I really am. And then I began to, you know, want to regain this loving, caring person who felt so good after a day's work of taking care of mm -hmm. sick people in the hospital. You know, I, I wonder, you know, sometimes there's some literature out there that would say that you were ready to hear the story as uh. opposed to uh, the, the same story had been maybe told to you. I don't know if this is true or not, it's, it's but some people say, I, I've heard the story's been told to you 10 times, but it was the 11th time you were there ready to listen and absorb the story. Yes. Do you think that maybe yes. some of that? Yes, very much so, very much so. And you know, um, then meeting Robert, going to that program, I mean, everything just fell into place for me and blossomed. I mean, within a year's time, we had an apartment, even though it was very small in the basement, and we didn't have any daylight. <laughs> we had an apartment together, and from the apartment we moved to a mm -hmm. house. Then we had a car, and now look at us. Uh oh, I forgot the big part. We got married while in that basement <laughs> apartment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we moved upstairs and rented the house, and wow. we got a car. And next thing we knew, we're home. home. We're now homeowners with a, a even better car. And, 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 and Robert has a job. Yeah. Robert, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's very important. How I also students. worked. I got. I went through the CPS training, but I'm going to be honest with you. The um, the CPS training certified peer specialist. Yes, training. I apologize. Certified peer specialist training is not for everyone. True. It's not for people like me. It's 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 a wonderful program, and it really it helps people and it's in very recovery. Effective. Yes, it is. Definitely. As far as getting you back on the the track to realizing that you can be a positive function and part of society. But there's so much stigma still involved. Oh, in definitely, definitely. And, because and, the people and you work for. Part yeah. of your story is a stigma story. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we're going to like try and do some more work down the road really? on the stigma <laughs> in another show. Yeah. But here's, as you went along and uh, got more involved in what we would call a social model of recovery as opposed mm -hmm. to a medical model no. of recovery. Right. <laughs> Did that change uh, the symptomatology that was associated with the medical model? I mean, in other words, as you became more engaged in, in, with Robert and doing other things in your life, did that facilitate uh, uh, less of a feeling that you're a medically indigent, handicapped, and I, and I say those words with mm -hmm. intent, not that I believe them, but I say them <laughs> with intent, as opposed to what we would call uh, you're being uh, like dealing with the challenge of your life. And I'm wondering, do, do, do you see that as, a, as a, 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 an avenue that you went through and that now it, it has helped you maintain your stability? Is that your rule? Yes, 100 percent. Yes, 100 percent. Because uh, going through the certified peer tra specialist training taught me how to advocate for myself. It uh, empowered me. It gave me hope. Yeah. 
It gave me hope. And the Department of Behavioral Health has been very instrumental in getting me to where I am. Mm -hmm. The storytelling training and all of those different avenues that they have, taking recovery to the streets when Let's you go, go out yeah. and speak with other people who are trying to realize that recovery is possible. All of that stuff was very crucial in getting me to the Gloria that I am today. Yes. I mean, I've and have, managing your life. Uh, yeah, so I have an associate's might, degree working yeah. on a bachelor's. Wow, who would have thought? And I mean, I'm moving on from that. I, I, I have goals now, and I realize that these goals are possible. Right. And it's all through the, um, the, the transformation of the way people look at people in recovery. That's, that's so yeah. true. true. That's true. the whole concept of the Philadelphia program. If yeah. there is a Philadelphia story yes, that has is. been evolving over the last, uh, I mean, I guess 10 years, Ten years or eight years it. now, that story is one in which, uh, you know, strength-based model can be very helpful. Now, we're not denying the fact that some people need medication, and yes. I'm not denying that people need psych services, as we yes. refer to them sometimes, but when we rely on them only and, and as the singular most important concept, I think we lose our ability to build strength to move us out of yes. a situation that is more debilitative than necessarily helpful. And, and I think that's what the certified peer specialist training is. Yeah. Because the storytelling is actually sharing a shadow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. actually when you yeah. tell your story, what are you doing? You're humanizing yes. what they ha refer to in the field sometimes as the, the humanizing of the shadow. And the more you expose your shadow, the more you expose your shadow, it draws you into a more healthier relationship with each other because yes. you are what you look like. I mean, you yes. are the person that you present. Indeed. And therefore, there's no anxiety around it. You don't have to hide. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say to yourself, did I tell her this or uh, <laughs> no, did they right. know that? I mean, right. you know, all those exactly. things. And, and that creates, you know, no anxiety in your life. I, pe more people, I think everyone should go through certified peer specialists, not to become certified peer specialists. But just to, but just just to get the, the knowledge. The knowledge. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I often say that, and I've said it in many shows, uh, the twelve step program. People always want to say, "Oh, it's an NA or an AA model." No, it isn't. It's a it's a life, it's a life model. model. It's yeah. a yeah. life model. Yeah, you know, doing inventory work. You know, talking to God. It's just I mean, all it's your choice. You, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think yeah. about it. Giving yeah. back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. isn't that what good people do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, really, when you think it's about it, it's a master it. plan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a ma it's a good master plan. <laughs> yeah. So but you guys, you guys kind of set the gauge in terms for each other. You know, you mentioned school, and I'm quite sure that kind of sparked you, Robert. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I got jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got jealous? Yeah, when she got, <laughs> I have to be honest, because this is, this is honesty. When she got her associate, because when I was talking to Doc mm -hmm. back in the day, and when I say back in the day, about 2006, yeah, 2007. Yeah. I thought you were coming to community. I was coming to community college <laughs> to start setting some things up. <laughs> but then uh, our deputy commissioner, Shaudet Ali, right. I had been fighting her and the doc, and probably you a couple of times, <laughs> when everybody was asking me and pushing me, let's get you in school. Right. You Indeed. got what it takes. Yeah. I, I have to admit it. You all were right on me. Um, but you couldn't hear the voice understanding then. My, no, understanding my limitations, just getting back into the workforce, yeah. just handling um, a new home, just handling a new wife again. Mm -hmm. Like, I was trying to figure out some balancing acts yeah. first in Robert's life. Mm -hmm. To add something else on my plate could have possibly tipped, tipped the scale to mm -hmm. the point where I fell back off. Yeah. So I needed to take my time. But... In taking my time, I was watching my wife grow yeah. and get more <laughs> educated. And I was still getting educated in a different way, but that piece of paper, I have to admit, it helps you in a field like ours. Yeah. And when yeah. I say a field like ours, be behavioral health, mental health, you know, even if you work in DHS, wherever, anything that has to do with helping another person. That piece of paper can take you that much Indeed. further. I actually, I, I, I mean, not to interrupt, mm -hmm. I actually think those skills, because I know that program, because we certify people coming out of it into the college and give them college credit. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a, a, not just uh, for counselors. Again, to repeat, I think it's just a wonderful way to learn how to live life. Life. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Not, and not manage 100%. it to a degree. 
Yeah, yeah, and manage it. You, you know, when I think of Robert, um, his transformation, even in, even in working for the DBH, and um, not too many people at that time. I think you probably would have. Uh, I was one, the first one of the first ones to get hired. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand your challenge. It's like let me just learn how to maintain the job, exactly. and work along in this this you know the diversity of the job. In school, I understand that. I, yeah. I follow you. It's like, wow, this is, I, I'm the first one here, so how do I manage? Sure. Exactly. And fall in yeah. and without this stigma being attached. And yeah. that was a very, very scary piece being the first one back, because I was in the very first class for a certified peer specialist. So I was the first one to uh, obtain a job in such a prolific organization, meaning DBH is one of the biggest organizations for mental health, behavioral health mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. Yeah. So there was a lot of weight on my shoulders because I was the first one. So it was like, here's the guinea pig. Let's see if, <laughs> if he's he can gonna manage. handle it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? Like I said, with all the personal things that my higher power has blessed me with. I had that on my plate, so I was dealing with a lot at home. But then, thank God that, you know, I have the understanding, like you were talking about, Doc, that you need the medical model. You need the new transformation model. You need the holistic model. You know, you just need good support, people around you, just to deal with yeah. life, period. That education piece, to just understand. You need the NA to learn how to sure, do, you, you know, things. and uh, yeah, it, and it, also what, what gets lacking because of our traditional training, I, I suspect, the whole spiritual issue gets gets lost in that, and I mean, I know both of you talk about spirituality in, in a certain way, and, 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 and I've often said this to students, and I'll say it here too, is that, <laughs> is that you know, it, it's not that Christ died, which is as important. What's important is that he was resurrected. Yes. And in a sense, transformation is the resurrection. Yes. 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 And, yes. and that's important. If, if you just was, were resilient to your, in your life, and if you just got yourself healed from your disorder mm -hmm. and didn't transform Form. into something, right. yeah. mm -hmm. you're not going anywhere. You're going anywhere. And that's where the relapse really comes in a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yes. People don't make a transformation in their life. Yes. Yeah. Don't you yeah. think? Very, very so true. we think about it as a, as a biological, a psychological, a social, social, and we think of it as a spiritual issue. And I don't want to uh, uh, degrade the spirituality because you know in this culture with science and how we, you know we you know it's a sacred cow science so to speak. But the reality of life is that without some spiritual presence in your life, I think it's very very difficult for you to transform. Oh, without yeah. a doubt, yeah. she, she talked about that yeah. a lot in her belief. Yeah. In spite of what she was going through with the challenges, you always had that underneath foundation of believing yes. in something. Yes. Yeah. And, and it Definitely. takes a lot to maintain that throughout your process. Did you ever, I'm kind of curious, and I've heard these stories from different people, and if you feel comfortable talking about them, <laughs> is that when, uh, when you did uh, find out that you were HIV positive, mm -hmm. um, could you share a little bit about how you got to to that experience of getting positive and what happened to you did you fall away from I think you're a Christian if I'm not mistaken in the sense of when we talk with each other and I'm wondering yeah, did you I'm say uh, what did God do for me on this one <laughs> you know well I'm gonna tell you I found out by fluke oh okay really 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 I was healthy still am healthy I never got sick it was one day I was in Center City. I really didn't have any direction. And it was a beautiful spring day and I walked down towards Center City and there's a HIV and AIDS testing, testing place right on the corner of 11th and Locust. Yeah, yeah. I right know. there. Yeah. And they keep the blinds closed and stuff. So there was a big sign that said they were offering a gift card and I could use $10 because I needed a meal because I had just gotten out mm -hmm. nowhere to go. So I walked in, and um, when I came in, I signed up for the gift card. And they said, oh, in order to get the gift card, you need to take a blood test. Yeah. At that and time, you know, they were blood. And I think it's important to realize that 
you don't need to do a blood test now. Yeah. You right. can do a saliva. Very yeah. simple to get yeah. tested mm -hmm. today. So we did it. You know, I'm thinking everything's okay. And they quote that you sit out front for a minute while they, you know, they, they have what is a pre-answer. That's right. Not the final answer. Right. But they came rushing back out and was like, we need to take you back into the consultation room. And I'm like, okay, am I about to get another gift card? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. They double it up. <laughs> they, so they huddled me in there and, you know, started consoling me and listening. You, you know, we found out you're positive, blase. You know, and at that point, you know, I was devastated. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I did know People were not dropping off at yeah, that point. Like they were in the early 80s. Like yeah, in the 80s. Yeah. So there was still that glimmer of hope because the best part was my doc, current doctor's office now is on that same block. So they were able to refer me right there to Jonathan Lack's like, treatment center. Yeah, yeah. I went upstairs with my doctor, Dr. Mounds, and he is the best. I've been with him, and he's helped me stop smoking. He's helped yeah. me. Good. You know, to live a more holistic, natural life. You, you know, we're, we're, we're going to probably mm -hmm. end the show, but yeah. uh, what's important is that there are a lot of people who are walking on the streets positive and don't, don't know, know it, it. Yes. and don't even know that they're, I was one of, in, yes. you know, infecting other people. Yes. So I think the lesson that we could end this session with, at least, uh, is to say to everyone in the audience that go get tested. Uh, it's a simple test, not a problem issue, and, yes. and it will be very, very helpful in your own health yes. and in the health of other people that you would be and intimate with. And if you're talking with, about intimacy, say. you're yeah. not only saving your life, you're saving your partner. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the gift well, card was the, the results yeah. Yeah. of life yeah. for you. Yes, yes, for me. That was a gift. That was and a gift. Yeah. Listen, worth more than any money. Yeah, come on. Well, let, yeah. me, let me just uh, end this by saying, uh, I could see why you two are intimate. I mean, you have this <laughs> wonderful relationship. <laughs> Thank you. And, I, I, and everyone should find uh, this kind of intimacy in, in their life yes. uh, that I think would make them their lives a whole lot better. So I want to thank both of you and also, obviously, my friend. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want to thank you guys yes. as well. What a wonderful yeah. time. Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank okay. you for having us. Well, that's all the time we have today. I want to thank our guests for being with us and thank you out there for tuning in. You have been watching the Tapestry of Life on CCPTV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm Dr. Pascal Scholes, Professor of Behavioral Health and Human Services. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you.